Okay. Today is, oh, that's a good question. June 12th? June 13th. No. 13th. June 13th, 2011. We're going to start to take up the exam review. This is our last week to review. So we took up a couple of tests previous to this. Now, the very first question. I'm sorry to say that for some reason it did not put in the function. So I'm going to draw a function in right now. OK? So this function goes on forever, we're going to say. Uh, this is the origin, 0 and 0. So this is 1. And we're going to say negative 1 is the lowest it goes. It wants the domain of this function. So is that relating to the x or the y axis? OK. So we're talking about the x axis. And we need to write the domain of this function. Does this function have any limitations? What are they? On which axis? Does it have any limitations on the x-axis? No. So domain of this function is x is a set of all real numbers. Very simple, OK? When you get your review and you go to print it off, this does not show up for some reason. This is what you're supposed to be looking at, though. It's just a continuous squiggly line that goes on forever. So when it talks about domain, x is the set of all real numbers. Second question. Hmm. What am I going to do? Question number two it says to factor this expression. So when we're factoring, we need to find the factors of the first term. We need to find the factors of the first term. The coefficient is 1. So the factors of 1 are just 1 and 1. Factors of the last term, 40. So we have 1 and 40, 2 and 20, 4 and 10, and 5 and 8. We need to multiply the columns so that their products add up to our b, which is negative 3. So quickly looking at this, 1 and 1 is not going to change any of the other columns. So I look for combinations. I know 8 and 5 will work. And I'm going to need 8 to be negative. So this 8 will be negative. When I go to put them into my brackets, I'm going to take my first terms first, which are 1x and 1x. So I can just write x and x as the first term. Now, this part is important. I multiplied 1 by 5 and 1 by negative 8. Now, normally, if there was some number here or the first terms were different, that becomes very important because the second number has to go in the opposite column. But since both numbers are the same, I'm just going to plug the number in. So in one of them, I have positive 5. And the other one I have negative 8. OK. The graph of y equals sine x is reflected on the x-axis, vertically stretched by a factor of negative 0.5, translated 7 units downwards. What is the equation of the transformed function? So if you guys remember, our original graph is sine y equals sine x, what they've shown us here. We write it as y is equal to a sine bracket x minus h plus k. So, if you guys remember, A deals with reflection and stretching of a sine wave or a parabola. H deals with movements along the x-axis, so horizontally. And K deals with movements on the y-axis, so vertically. So the very first question says, 
or sorry, the very first stipulation is reflection on the x-axis. That means our A, whatever number it is, is going to be negative. It then says it is stretched vertically by a factor of negative 0.5. So in this question, I gave away the negative already, but I may not do that on your exam. It says it's stretched by a factor of 0.5. So we're replacing A with 0.5. Or what fraction could that be? 1 over 2. <laughs> so y is equal to negative. We're going to put 0.5 since that's what you guys are probably used to. The sign doesn't change. The x doesn't change. Uh, is there any horizontal shift in this question? No. So if there's no horizontal shift, I don't need to put brackets around x. I can just put sign x. All right, so we dealt with the horizontal shift. And finally, it says it is translated seven units downward. That's a movement on the y-axis. And because it's downwards, that means we're moving in a negative direction seven units. So you can't read that. What it says is y is equal to negative 0 0.5 sine x minus 7 is the answer to question three. Okay? Okay, question number four says that for a quadratic function, and if you guys remember, a quadratic function is y equals x squared. It's a parabola shape on that graph. They've given us this equation. What I should say are the coordinates or the vertex, and what is the max value? So the coordinates of the vertex, when we go to our equation, y equals A times X minus H plus K. The coordinates of the vertex do not deal with A. The coordinates of the vertex only deal with our H value and our K value. Our H value will be the X coordinate of the vertex, and our K value will be the Y coordinate of the vertex. Okay? So our Y value of the vertex, let me do that one quickly. Whoops, wrong color here. Y value of the vertex is the exact same number as K. So in this instance, our K is negative 6. So our Y value is negative 6. Our X value is the opposite sign of H. So our H value is positive 7. So the actual coordinate of the vertex is negative 7. Our vertex is negative 7 and negative 6. That's one part of the question done. We found the vertex. What is the max value? So first of all, this is a parabola that is negative. So it's facing downwards. So we know that it is true that it does have a max value. And the max value deal, er, deals with the y coordinate of the vertex. So what is the y value of our, of our vertex? Negative 6. So our max value. And I want you to write it this way, is y equals negative 6. Okay, so question 6. Given f at n is negative 3n squared plus 4. I'm going to rewrite that in case you can't see it. Negative 3n squared plus 4. They want us to find f at negative 6. So when I rewrite this, I write in f at negative 6 is equal to, and I replace my n with the value of negative 6. According to bed mass, we do the exponent first. So negative 6 times negative 6, anyone know? 36, good. Next, we're going to do multiplication. 36 times negative 3, negative 108 plus 4. And you know, I, I just trusted you. Let me check. Yeah, you got it. Okay. Negative 108 plus 4. I can't believe it took you that long to do that calculation than the other one. 
It's negative 104. Good job, Christian. You got that question.